Hello everyone and this is a demonstration on how to make mini pizzas. So for this in the recipe you will need your strong white flour. I've got a wee bit of extra flour here just for when we're working with the dough just so it doesn't stick to the surface. So you'll need kind of two lots of flour. You'll need your sugar, yeast and salt can be mixed up prior. You will need water going by the recipe. And for it, that's basically all you need for the base. But for the toppings, you can use whatever you want. This recipe allows for like a margarita style. So for that, you will all need either passata or a tomato based sauce. If you've got like Heinz tomato sauce in the cupboard, that's perfectly fine. Just something that would give you a sauce base. I've just grated some normal cheddar cheese from my fridge. Um, but as well as that, like if you've got any spare cheese, like mozzarella, parmesan, anything you've kind of fancy putting on as additional toppings it's entirely up to yourself so I do have like onions and peppers to help you um, show you how to do that if you did require any vegetables for your toppings as well as that I've got additional kind of flavours so like oregano and chilli um, again it's up to yourself whatever you've got in your cupboard you can just add to it so what I'm going to show you basically is a margarita style mini pizza and from there, I can show you like adaptions as to what else you could add to it. And you could just raid your cupboards at home with whatever you're allowed to use. So before we start, I've already um, got a baking tray with the greaseproof paper. Um, if you don't have greaseproof paper, feel free to just scatter some flour loosely on it, like the way we do in class, so that the pizzas don't stick. Okay, so have that ready. And before you start a swirl, preheat your oven to 200 degrees, the way it says on the recipe. So make sure your oven's preheated before you start so it will be ready in time. And then we're ready to go. So take your bowl of flour and with a spoon, with a fork, uh, sorry, with a knife, make a wee well the way that we've done in class. We've made, uh, we've made bread based products before so this won't be too new to you. So you make a wee, make a wee belly button well in the centre. Add in all your dry ingredients, your sugar, salt and yeast. Add that all in. Make sure it's all added in and just with with a dry knife just stir that round again make a wee belly button and this is where you're going to add the water gradually now you've learned this word loads of times when you add something gradually um, that means that it's to be added slowly so that it doesn't become soggy okay and um, so with your water make that wee belly button and the wee the tip is when when it's filled stop and with the your knife the sharp end stir that through until it disappears okay so as you can see it's soaked up all that water it's dry again so you make a second wee well and keep on repeating that kind of process now with the water amount on the recipe um you might need less you might need more it's just like a guideline guided amount so that's why it's really important to add it gradually so just keep on doing that technique of making a belly button well adding in the water gradually if you don't add it in gradually we've gone over this in class prior before this it will become quite soggy and it's it's difficult to fix it um, but if it does happen if you've added too much water um, just add more flour to kind of absorb that water and it will it will get back to what we're looking for which i'll show you in a wee minute so i'm just mixing this in and as you can see it's all come together in a dough ball effect it's all kind of wanting to come off the the bowl into a dough ball and that's it all kind of stuck together and i feel like i could now work with this now the texture of this is quite sticky so what i'm going to show you is how to prevent your hands becoming sticky and that's why you needed that extra bit of flour at the start in your uh, ingredients so once you get to this consistency where it's kind of wanting to come off the bowl um, in a dough ball kind of shape stop and as you can see i've got quite a look quite a bit of water left so it just goes to show you might not need it all put that to the side and this is where you need to get your extra flour get a clean work surface I've just I'm just using a chopping board but as long as your work tops are clean like anything is fine to use roll up your sleeves obviously your hands have been washed prior to all of this as well and um, this is your extra flour sprinkle that all over just the way we do in class so it doesn't stick to the work table okay just even amounts and then this is where you're going to roll out well not roll out tip out your dough that you've just made and 
it's kind of got that sticky uh, appearance right now, but with the help of that extra flour you've just scattered, it should help it. Okay, so I'm just going to add a wee bit more to my own hands so that it doesn't stick, just like this. And less is more approach to this. See how I'm just delicately kind of rolling it around in the flour? That's how we get rid of anything sticky, okay? So as you can see there, just kind of rolling it about and you can see there that it's now quite firm and it doesn't, it no longer has that sticky approach that it did when it was in the bowl. That's the kind of texture you're wanting where it's going from either hand and it's not sticking and your hands have just simply got floured in it. That's what you're wanting. So play around with this and you're going to do what's called kneading, okay? Now with this, the more you work it, the better it will uh, work for you, okay? So what to do is with your two um, bits of your palm, kind of work at it, pull it back, work and stretch, pull it back and just do that for a wee bit. Again, if your hands get sticky or it's starting to get a stickier texture, add some more flour, okay? Don't go overboard with the flour, just add enough so that it's not sticking to your hands. So just kind of rolling it and stretching it, rolling it back using your palms and stretching it and roll back, rolling it in the flour so it doesn't get any sticky, uh, it doesn't become sticky and you get the idea. You're just using your palms, folding it upon itself, stretching it with your palms, rolling it upon itself, stretching it with your palms and so on. Okay, now you get the idea. It does kind of stretch in size when you do that and then that allows you to then make your wee mini pizzas. Now, with this, you can make as many miniature pizzas as you kind of want to, but I'm going to try and show you how is best to, to get a, a good amount out of this. So, first things first, with a sharp knife, with a sharp knife, I would take your uh, dough ball and cut it into manageable quarters. So four manageable quarters, okay? Just like that. And this way, again, just roll all these edges that haven't been coated in flour, you know, like the inner edges that you've now cut into quarters, and roll them about in a wee bit of flour. And I'm going to work with those four. So I'm today going to show you how to make four miniature pizzas, just so you can see there. Um, again, it depends how many you want to make them though. Like you could, again, just use your math skills and you could divide them up into six or eight. Um, it's up to yourself. But I'm going to make four just for the sake of example and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. So when you've got your four um, dough balls with your hands, um, you're just wanting to kind of press it down. This flour won't rise too much in the oven, so the kind of thickness of the pizzas is entirely up to yourself. Now as you can see, my hands are getting a wee bit sticky, so again I'm just going to add a wee bit more flour. Just put it at the side and just work with that. Use as much flour as you need to. There's nothing worse than sticky hands when you're making this. So again, it's up to you the thickness of your mini pizzas. Um, you can make them as thick or thin as you want to. I try and do it the thickness of a finger um, because otherwise it's going to make a wee bit of like, you don't want it too crispy. Um, but if you make it the wee thickness of, a, of your finger, then you should get four good amounts. And as you can see with my hands, I am just Kind of pressing it down it's not sticking to the bottom because it's got plenty flour on it and you can see that it's just kind of working its way out now you could use a rolling pin if you wanted to i'm just going for that rustic kind of homemade look um but if you did want to use a rolling pin that's absolutely fine you could just roll them out rather than patting them down um you could use cutters if you wanted to but i'm just kind of showing you how you could do it in in your house without worrying too much about what equipment you have. So I'm trying to show you how to kind of do this without as much equipment as we might have used in school, you know, just so it's easier for you at the house. So as you can see, I'm just molding them with my hand. Again, you can make any shape you want. T typically pizzas are circular, but not always. If you, if you did have cutters, if you wanted to, you could make them into different shapes, um, anything you wanted to, um, your pizzas, your mini pizzas, but I'm just for example sake making four little um, circular pizzas for you. So I'm just going to give my hands a wee quick wash just for the next stage. Okay, um, it's not that your hands are needing wash, it's just, just the sake of the flour just for the next step. So, 
Um, yeah, so you've got the four, four pizzas ready to go. And this is where you then design your own tall beans. So just for example's sake, I'm going to start with the basic margarita and then we can, we can adapt to uh, whatever you want. So for that, I'm going to use what's called passata. We use this in school quite often when we're making pasta or tomato based products. But again, if you don't have what's called passata, which is just basically concentrated tomatoes, you can use Heinz tomato sauce. Like it's, a, it's the same, same idea, same tomato based, okay? Or if you don't have that, you've maybe got barbecue sauce or something like that, that's perfectly fine. Anyway, with a wee teaspoon, a uh, wee bit of tomato sauce on the base, use your pinky, just like we do in class. Just kind of the back of the spoon, just spread it evenly across. I kind of uh, don't do the whole thing um, because you want a wee bit of a crust around the edge. So I would just maybe focus on spreading the sauce around the center and working your way out um, so that you've still got that kind of crust. Now, I don't know if you can see this clearly at the moment, but I'll try and I'll, uh, bring the camera over. So again, I'm just gonna repeat that. Wee bit of sauce, wee bit of pinky. Work from the center outwards to create that kind of crust. You get the idea. Just kind of as much as little as you want. Um, a wee tip though, if you're wanting to make sure it doesn't burn, I would give yourself a good amount of sauce. That's what causes a crust. It do, it's not covered by any sauce. So make sure that the center part that you're wanting the filling on does have a good base um, because otherwise it'll just crust up like the crust should, uh, not the entire pizza. So again, just working from the inside and out, using the back of the spoon, Spread that nice and evenly. You get the idea. Hopefully you can see that well enough on the computer on the phone. And you're just spreading that. As you as you do one and move on to the others, you kind of get a wee bit more confident with them. But remember, they're rustic, they're your own homemade pizzas. So be imaginative with it and don't don't have too much pressure on them being all the same, okay? Not all pizzas ever the same, ever. So again, that's my base done. Um, if you did want to add any ingredients, um, I'm gonna show you how to prep an onion and a pepper. Um, but that's your kind of general base done. And what you would do here is I would then, if you're wanting to make margaritas, you could you would then go and add the cheese. But if you're wanting fillings, so what I'll do is I'll show you both. I'll show you like the straightforward margarita where it's just basically a passata and then cheese. Again, as much or as little cheese as you like. Some people don't like cheese. Um, it's entirely up to you what, what toppings you have. They're your pizzas. You can add literally whatever you want. Um, as long as you've got a base and your basic kind of cheese, um, then it's up to you really what pizza you want. So basically, passata, cheese. If you wanted to add mozzarella cheese, parmesan, you can add as many cheeses as you want. But then I would go straight to like the oregano, um, which is just basically like an Italian herb, which you get on most um, pizzas, just to kind of finish it off and give it some extra flavor. This, this adds to the appearance as well. I'll show you a close up when they're all finished um, of what it looks like. So that's basically the, the, the basic mini margarita, where it's just passata, cheese, and oregano. If you don't have oregano, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, again, I've got some chili here. So I'm gonna maybe do a wee bit of a different kind of uh, flavoring on the other two, just to give you kind of an idea of what else you could do from the house ingredients. So with the chili, with the onion and pepper, I might do like a spicy kind of take on a mini pizza. So I'm just gonna prep my onion. Now you don't need much for these mini pizzas, maybe, I mean, I've got a quarter of an onion here. You wouldn't even need half of that because it's tiny wee amounts, unless you like your onions. I wouldn't be too, don't use up a whole onion in your fridge anyway, about half of a quarter, just a tiny wee bit is all you need, okay? So with that, you're wanting to use your skills that you've done in class and you're gonna be really careful with your knife and you're gonna chop this up to tiny, tiny wee pieces. But again, it is your pizza, you can do whatever you want. But sometimes if you're making this for someone that's maybe a wee bit fussy on the vegetable front, you would cut this up really small. So what to do is put it on a flat surface, hold it like a claw, 
and chop into it really, really small, okay? So with the lines and an onion, score into them, just like we do in class. And this gets to that technique of making them really, really small, okay? Just really controlled chopping techniques is all you have to do, really controlled chops. Okay, now it's up to you if you even want to use onion. I'm just showing this for example sake. Um, if you're wanting to do some veg prep, this would obviously get into your five a day as well. Um, if you've got any vegetables that are maybe on their way out in the fridge and maybe they've got no use, you could maybe try and be as creative as you can. Anything can go on a pizza, like anything can go on a pizza. So maybe if, if there was vegetables that were past their best and you could still use them though, you could add whatever you wanted. So with this, you can see here that the onion is really, really small. You can see here, really small bits of onion. And you can just add that as much or as little as you want. So I'm just gonna add a wee bit. I'm gonna go for like a fajita style flavor. So I'm just gonna go for a wee bit of onion on both. Again, it's up to you how much or as little as you want. Okay, and then Again, I've only got a red pepper here, just for example, but if you had different peppers, you could use different um, peppers in the fridge. So with that, I'm just going to take out the pips. Again, just like you would in class, use a paper towel for any peelings, any rubbish, just to keep it as tidy as you can. Because um, obviously, your parents might be out at the moment when you're making this, you want to try and keep the kitchen as clean as possible. Um, so that it's not too too messy um, and you can either keep them in strips like a fajita style or you can cut them tiny. Now we've done loads of veg prep in class so with the pepper you can either keep it in strips or you can keep it into dices. Again it's entirely up to yourself but I'm just for example sake making wee dices. As you can see here wee dice and I'm just again going to add this on. You get the idea. And then I would like to put cheese on this. So I'm going to add cheese to this one. As clean as you go and keep your hands as clean as you can. Cheese here. Add a wee speck of cheese. And then again with the oregano, you could add oregano, but that tends to be for like a Italian style. Um, as this is maybe going for a spicier take, this is where I'm going to use the, the chilli flakes. Now chilli flakes are really spicy, some of you will probably have this in your cupboard, um, less is more, we've used them in class. Um, but like I said, most of you will have herbs or spices in your cupboard. Just have a wee kind of pick and mix at what would go and be quite creative, because like I said, anything can go on your pizzas. Okay, now. What I'm going to do is, before I show you a close-up of this, I'm going to transfer this onto this baking tray that I've already pre-prepared, just so I can show you what it would look like before going into the oven, and then that's us, okay? So let me just kind of move stuff around, and I'm just going to transfer this now. If it's easier, if you've got like a spatula, um, it might be easier to shift it like that if it's a wee bit trickier, especially if you've like fully loaded your pizzas, it might be easier for you to use a spatula um, to transfer them over and what I'll do is I'll take the camera over so you can see them up up close with what they look like now they won't grow too much in the oven but don't put them too close together because just in case they do and um, you've maybe seen that in class that sometimes when things do start cooking they try and join up together I'm just going to put a wee bit more oregano oh, a wee bit too much there a wee bit more oregano on the Italian pizza one and yeah you get the idea so I'm just going to before I put this into the oven and on the recipe follow it with how long it takes um, keep an eye on them whilst they're in the oven you can see here my wee mini pizzas wee mini pizzas um, so use your, use your oven gloves obviously the oven's been preheated so it's going to be very hot and what you're going to do is put your oven gloves on Put them into the top shelf always because that's where it's hotter and then keep an eye on it for 20 minutes and in that 20 minutes do your dishes so um i'm just going to show you a wee close-up of the pizzas hopefully you can see them my camera skills aren't great guys <laughs> 
but you get the idea. And then uh, I'm just gonna put my oven gloves on and put them in and that's it for 20 minutes. So good luck with making them yourself and I'm here for any questions that you may have. But follow the recipe, follow my demonstration and I know you'll be great. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you later.